the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. It's just, it's, it's not even worth sitting there for people to sit there and learn that hate you've got, there's no justification for hate. There is no justification for hate. You cannot operate in hate for nobody. You can sit there and may not like what somebody do, but you cannot hate them because the Bible told us we're supposed to love people. And the Bible does not mean when you love somebody that they can do what they want to do. But he's not telling you that. I'm not telling you that. And you don't need to sit there and focus on Don't get all mixed up and tied up and try to focus on what you don't like and what disdains you. And therefore, you don't figure that you can hate somebody. You can't. You can't hate somebody. You've got to love people. So let's see here. This is one of the biggest things that people go ahead and, and, and so then figure they can justify hating somebody. And 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 this let's go and read that real quick. I'm sorry, I, I, I came off track. I'm only a few verses off anyway before I finish. Romans 1 19, and we'll read to the end. Because that because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Let me make sure I go up the side of the right now. But this is one of the things that people sit there and they refer back to the old testament as, as if they're supposed to have the right, especially certain people. Here you go right here. The wrath, God's wrath on unrighteousness. Did you understand that that did not just talk about people with or sexual orientation? Let's go ahead and read it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all. Did you hear that? Listen to the words, not me. All ungodliness. That means even adultery even murder, even hate. Listen, let's read it. All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are, even his eternal power in God's head, so that they are without excuse. That ain't for you to focus on, it's for them to focus on, that they are not, with, they have no excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolishness, foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man into birds and four-footed beasts and teeth and things, image worship, pagan worship. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to desire to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. And that means if you sitting there worshiping your political party, worshiping the color of your skin, worshiping man, instead of the creator, you got issues. This is not just talking about people with sexual orientation. It's talking about ungodliness, all ungodliness. And there's some people that do worship other things other than God. Not just people that got a different sexual orientation, but even people who worship money. Huh? Come on, man. Let's go ahead and read again. Verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness 
through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up into unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise men also, come on now, leaving the natural use of the woman, burnt in their lust, come on now, toward another, one, you know, lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. Now, come on read. So now we're talking about some of these people have gone into a different sexual orientation. All right? Now, let's go ahead. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all the righteousness, listen to this. Because now he's getting a list of other people, not just people we're talking about as different sexual orientation, but he's talking about other people now, or other peace, other things that people do. Let's look at these other things that people do. Because these things are also called unrighteousness. These are the things also called ungodliness. So when you sit there and say you're going to hate somebody because of sexual orientation, you need to understand that you, you need to make sure you also hate these other things too. But you don't need to hate the person. You love the person. It's not the person. And you need to hate the sin that you commit. Because let's look at some of these things here. Being filled with all unrighteousness. That's all unrighteousness. Anything that's not in right standing with God. What's, what's one of them? Fornication. Wickedness. Covetousness. Maliciousness. Full of envy. Murders. Or murderers. Debate. People full of debate. Deceit. Malignity. Whisperer. Backbiter, hater of God, despiteful, proud, boaster, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents. Now, for some reason, somebody only took that as talking about people with different sexual orientation. But let me tell you something. If this is what for people with sexual, different sexual orientation, these are the things that he does not like, period whether you are straight or gay he doesn't like these things period but i'll read them again all unrighteousness fornication he doesn't like that wickedness he doesn't like that covetousness he doesn't like that maliciousness he doesn't like that full of envy he doesn't like that and how many people know when you deal with got envy in them he doesn't like that murder he doesn't like that. And yeah, you got some people that sit there and hang people, kill people because of the color of the skin, because of the sexual orientation, because some they don't like. They kill people. He said he don't like that. He said that's unrighteousness. Being a murderer. And you think you're doing the will of God. And you murdering people just because they don't do it the way you think it should be done. What about this one? Debate, full of debate, full of all kinds. Just always arguing about something. Deceit, lying. That's one follow back in the proverb. It says, "See these six things that God hates. One of the things hates is a false witness, malignity, whisperer, backbiter, hater of God, proud, boaster, inventors of evil things." Disobedient to parents without understanding. Me you knowing and understanding the word of God. Don't understand what's going on, but it's going to act anyway. Covenant breaker. People that sit there, he's talking about even people that, that, that you, you found a covenant. You made an agreement, then you don't keep it. Without natural affection. Now you're talking about somebody that made a different orientation. 
but he put these other things in it too and that's what you need to know you can't sit there and isolate one area and you he just gave you a list in that whole chapter everybody sitting there going to romans 1 17. everybody want to go into the sexual but he's talking about proud boasters and inventors of even thing people don't lie he put that in there too you can't leave that out you can't leave that out if you said one is a abomination you gotta understand you can't leave the rest of it out because you if you are back and not following christ then you may probably will go in a place where he is prepared for the devil and angels because you hated somebody because you you focus on a piece instead of a whole piece he's this this romans one i mean romans one the people sit there and refer back to and see the only whole one couple of people paragraph instead of reading the whole thing he's talking about fornicators wickedness and all these other things these other things that people got to work on too and he wants you as a believer to help people work on these things but not sit there and condemn those people and some of those things take a long time we know that it takes a long time to get out of people from lying. It takes a long time to get people being pride and both for and, and all these other things too. They're not instantly living for those either. So we don't sit there and we try to help people grow instead of putting them down. Let's keep reading here. Look at it. 31. Again. 131. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without mass affection, irreplaceable. Look at this. Unmerciful. When you sit there and beat somebody up, you showing no mercy. You showing no love. But you think you're supposed to be doing God's will. Hmm. Look at this, verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things. Now look at that. He ain't said just one thing. He didn't say not just unnatural affection. He's sitting there saying all that other list that seems like people forget. You get up in church. Hey, yeah, let's go get those other people. And how many lies in there? How many proud boasters of people in there? How many deceits and unmerciful people are there? You sit there, we get all wrapped up in all this stuff and don't realize that that's not what he called you to do. He didn't call you to hate nobody. And it's not, and listen to this, he's not telling you if he don't like it, why do you think I'm telling you it's okay to do? I'm not telling you it's okay to do any of it. What I'm telling you is that you can't sit there and just cherry pick what you want and forget about what category you may fall into. If you you're unmerciful, maybe that's where you fell into. And you're sitting there lying in the seat, and you're acting on uh, uh, your covenant breaker. You, 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 you know, I mean, all these other things, whispers and backbiters. Maybe you fall in one of those categories too. You want somebody to hate you? You want somebody to not show mercy towards you? And yet mercy was given through Jesus Christ. So we should give mercy to him. Amen. So verse 32, wrap that piece up. It said, who knowing the judgment of God, the day which commits such things are worthy of death. Think about that. Not only do the same, listen to that, whoa, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Do what? See, we like to sit there and go, what we think about orientation, sexual orientation. That list, that list is, is more than sexual orientation, isn't it? It's one of the seven that some people hold on to. I'm not telling you that it's okay for any of them. Love people. Does not mean tell them to go do it. Love them is to help them and lift them up so that they can learn who Jesus is and point them in the right direction so they can do what Jesus says to do, not you. You can't make somebody, but I'm saying that you can't focus on one area of sin and think that it's okay. You can't sit there and leave the adulterer. You can't leave the fornicator and make it feel like they're okay. You can't sit there and leave the liar and say it's okay. That's what you're saying. If you, when you single out one area, you're telling all the other areas it's okay. When you sit there and say, don't bring that stuff, you ain't gonna bring these type of people in my church. 
But you said what you're saying is you don't mean you don't mean you don't know, like understand. But when you say that, but yet you allow the a liar, the unmerciful, the boastful, the proud. When you have the envy, the unforgiven, when you bring those, you saying is it's okay for you to come. I just don't want them to come. You basically saying is it's okay for them to do what they're doing. And you said they say, well, we don't cause about to stumble. But the problem is that you are causing people to stumble when you make it seem like it's okay for all these other categories. You must be okay because we'll let you in. But we, we're going to talk about these other people. And all these people sitting there yelling and shouting, yay, yay, clapping, oh, you got to get them out of here. But you, you ain't got to get the, you ain't got to get the, the liars out. You ain't got to get the, the, the backbiters out. You ain't got to get the boast of the crowd out. You ain't got to get the dumb to give it out. You see what I'm saying? That's all I've been trying to say. If you're going to do it, do it all. And the bottom out, here's the problem. You basically have to know the church. Your church, your ministry. That's why you don't do that. So you just want to take a small, small segment, but you, re you want the rest of them to stay because you don't want it to be an empty building. So you let them stumble by allowing these people to be in there. But that's not God. You treat, if you're going to say, all the said is going to show the glory of God, so therefore you're going to try to help everybody come up and point in the right direction so they can learn to be in fellowship and change and be ruined their mind to change, or you basically giving them permission. But I'm telling you, I ain't giving nobody permission. I'm not giving myself permission to do some of the things that, that's on that list and some other lists of works in play. So that's what that's why I had to bring it up because I'm telling you, some people sit there and get there and they only deal with the sexual orientation, but in reality, God is saying, no, I'm dealing more than that. I'm dealing more than that. 